In this video we'll go over IK and FK for the arms and the legs. So first let's revisit the legs. If we go down here and animate the IK control, the knee bends based on what you do with the foot and the hip. And that's inverse kinematics. Now remember these controls here, uh, they don't seem to be activated, right? They don't seem to do anything. Those are your FK controls. So we can switch the legs to act like the arms currently do. The arms are in FK, the legs are in IK right now. So if we needed for some reason to switch these legs over to FK mode, you can go to the box down at the bottom of the feet, pick the IK weight and turn it to zero. So zero is FK, one is IK. You can either snap between those values or you can animate between them. Once we switch that over to FK, these rings now are how you control the leg, much like the arm. So of course the difference is if we grab the body node here and move it around, this right leg that is now an FK moves like the arm does, like it's grouped underneath. So you don't get that ground contact IK solution that's going on with the left leg. So in general, I've done very little FK with legs ever, but if you had to do a character that was say swimming or in outer space and you didn't have to worry about ground contact, then that's where I would suggest using the FK leg solution. You'll find that it's very common to have options like these within your rig, different ways to animate a limb, body parts. So you'll have a number of controls that can kind of clutter up your workspace. So my advice is to take anything that you don't want to use and throw them in an extra layer. And that way you can hide them and you won't accidentally pick them as you're animating your other controls. If we go up to the arms now, the arms also have the option of being in IK space as well as FK space. So again, currently he's in FK space right now. So if we move the body around, the arms just follow. And then you control the arms with these rotation channels. So if you want to switch those over to IK space, on the back of the hand, there's a six-sided shape that you can change the IK weight from zero to one. And now it leaves these rings behind. And just like the leg rings, they don't seem to do anything. In this case, I have an extra layer that I need to turn on so I can see the IK handles for the hands. So it's called PV controls in this layer. I turn those on and then these diamonds are the controls to translate, rotate. And they also have the elbow twist channel, just like the leg has a knee twist. So with this option of having the hands and the leg, you do have the option of blending between those. You can see that if I slide from one to zero, the arm goes back and forth between the FK controls on the bottom there and that IK control diamond shape. I personally don't blend between the two. I just snap from one frame to the next and try to make that transition invisible, preferably during a fast arc. And then nobody can tell that there's been a switch between those modes. The problem is if you do end up halfway between these controls, the arm is now going to listen 50% to the FK control and it's going to listen 50% to the hand IK control. So you've doubled up your controls essentially, and then it can become something that's really confusing in the graph editor. And it's not listening to either one of these exactly. Nothing's lined up with the actual arm anymore. Some people do still blend in between this but I feel like that can be problematic. So the more obvious issue right now is with this rig specifically, this hand actually falls away from the, the rig. So that's an obvious situation where we can't really do this, but most rigs don't have that problem. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys have fun animating.